welcome back to another video so today as you can see about the title below it's a cost living we're gonna be discussing the cost living in the Philippines so since he is American so we're gonna be discussing this one so many because most of you are want to know so the foreigners uh, want to move here in the Philippines so they want to know the cost of living here in the Philippines so yeah. what can you say about it mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway the first thing that we need to do is um, I have the list here that I'm going to discuss about you guys so the first thing we're living in the city we're living in the city the the lifestyle that you're gonna be that you're gonna be we're going to be choose it's gonna be different also when you yeah I mean it'll be different from uh, whether you choose to live in the rural country or whether you live in a, a medium-sized city like we live in with what how many people here what it's uh, one million something one million something we're living in Bataan in Bataan yeah. or if you live in Manila or Subic or Cebu all the every area will be a little different so but it'll give you a general idea of what we spend in yeah. our basic monthly uh, expenses. Yeah. So first thing here we have the rent. So, but before anything else, I think if you're living with, if you have a 1,500 or 2,000 uh, monthly, I think that you'll be okay here. You'll be good here in the city. Yeah. But, yeah, we kind of just, we base this off of what we have for our uh, average general expenses per month. Yeah. Uh, we just don't want everybody to think that, you know, what we live off can be lived off because each indiv individual family is going to be different, of course. Yeah, of course. No. So first thing here, we have the rent. So our rent here in this house, we have three bedrooms. And then... Um, our rent is 7,000 pesos, so if we convert that one in dollars, that would be $140. Yeah, and, we, and how many square footage is, or square meters is the house? Do you remember? Um, it's like 150? Yeah, I think it's this a little bit smaller than that, just a little bit. It's, a, it's a, what would be comparable to a, a, a fairly standard uh, apartment in the city, in the U.S. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have internet, um, our internet here is 3,300 because we're doing the fiber, 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 and we have also phone included with the package. package. It's a package, so 3,300 peso that would be 66 dollars. Yeah, and we chose. There's different packages you can choose in the Philippines. Mm -mm. Uh, we're fortunate to be an area they're doing a lot more in development and fiber optic in the philippines yeah so that's one of the things if you require to have internet where you're at or at least fairly high speed internet yeah uh, look at the areas where you're going to there's difference in the in the internet i mean they have others that are just uh, uh like a wi-fi wireless internet uh that comes in and it, it works well but if you're going to do a lot of videos, you're going to watch YouTube, Netflix, those yeah. kinds of things, you you know, on a, on, a, on a large amount, you're going to have to have pretty good internet to, to get it to work. Yeah. So since I am a vlogger, so I need a very, uh, very high speed or very fast speed for the internet connection. So that's why we choose this package because it's very fast also. And then, yeah. So there are a lot of uh, internet connection like Globe, but we use the PLDT. So this is the PLDT fiber optic, right? That's yes. So that's it. Yeah, and it's unlimited. There's no, mm -hmm. uh, they don't dial it back toward the end of the month, you know, on your speed band because you've watched so many uh, gigs of uh, video or anything like that. So it stays very steady, very strong through uh, on the process. And, and so it gives you a very good steady platform to work with. Yeah, it's true. So next we have the the fail health or the insurance. So since um, I am a Filipino, so I decided to have or to get the fail health because that will really uh, be needing for us, especially for hospitalization and then some other stuff. So our fail health is basing because they have a new rules and regulation right now in fail health. So 
I got a 1,080 peso a month because they're basing how much you were in income in every month. So that is uh, $22 for the insurance. So they have a lot of insurance also like private insurance. You can go to the like in solar insurance, uh, manual life insurance, yeah. or the insurance that you can get in the bank. Yeah. No, uh, those are the private insurance though he can do that one i can do that one yeah. he can do but the phil health is only for filipinos yeah and, and americans or westerners or anyone else you know expats that come here yeah you can there there's quite a few different ways you can uh get health insurance here mm -hmm. uh, uh, like uh, she was saying you can get it through the bank. There's several private in industries. Yeah, insurance. You can also go to private hospitals and invest so much money in the hospital that gives you priority yeah. uh, in the hospital that kind of come first, uh, more kind of like first come first serve type thing. Uh, and and then then you still have a fee to pay, but it's a lower rate where you've invested in the private hospital. Mm -hmm. So uh, Social Security can be used but it you have it they're getting more and more strict on it on the medicaid you have to uh pay for it then resubmit it send it in i'm a veteran so i have veterans uh health insurance through yeah. the veterans administration yeah uh, they have certain designated doctors uh away from the va hospital in manila that you can use once it's approved uh or i can purchase i signed up when i left the u.s many years ago where i can purchase any uh, prescriptions or pay for hospitalization or anything and then submit it and then they reimburse it as long as it follows under the veterans uh, critique that there mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so I'm kind of pretty well covered with the health insurance in most aspects of it so additional information about the pri private insurance so uh, once you get a uh, private insurance that would be based they're gonna be basing your age so if your age is like 30 something so there will be a computing that one how much yeah. is your monthly so monthly. if you're like 50 something the more the more the older, the older you, get, you get the higher your, your insurance your yeah. insurance yeah and the only insurance that i pay for is i have life insurance i have a life insurance policy and i yeah, pay for and that VA, right? yeah through yeah. the veterans mm -hmm. so our electric is six thousand one hundred and that would be six thousand one hundred peso and then that would be one hundred twenty two dollars so your electric our electric is included the water the the, mm -hmm. the water is already given yeah. us we have a, a well pump well pump so that's yeah. that is already included in there yeah so and then we have two air condition but sometimes the the other one is not they don't it's Use not it running and we have the window type air condition we're not, we're not using the split type and then we have fans refrigerator and then water some other cooler, stuff, yeah. water cooler, computers, computers phones, phones, all that stuff. And yeah, that stuff, yeah stuff. And, and electricity in the Philippines uh, varies in the area where you're at, the cost per kilowatt. So, um, and ours is probably more above average deal because uh, uh, more of me, I, uh, we use air conditioning in the bedroom to keep it yeah. cool and like, and so, uh, it would definitely if we owned the house we would change the air conditioners out and go to split inverted yeah. where uh it's inverted to dc it would be better cost per kilowatt yeah. uh, hour usage and that would lower the electrical a little bit and then solar <laughs> and, and solar yeah yeah, yeah. in our so new home would be, we'll be 100 yeah. percent standalone solar yeah and then next we have the groceries guys so the groceries that would be included our water our water like uh, drinking, drinking water, water and also the propane or we call it here uh, gas tank here in the Philippines like tanki ng gas ganun mm. <laughs> so we budgeted that one 20,000 pesos that would be four four hundred dollars US US four hundred dollars US and then it's uh, what they call this one because Charlie is um, he has very uh, what they call this one he got different food also that we need to buy or we need to buy in the grocery so good thing we have a store here that we can buy also some american uh, foods so he just pick up in there and you know yeah you know and and it's it, it that all depends on the individual you know we all being in a different culture in a different area yeah um i love a lot of the filipino food mm -hmm. and i eat a lot of the filipino yeah. food 
but there's you know when it comes to like ketchup I have one brand of ketchup I like you know yeah. and the same way with the tuna I don't like yeah. I, I like the tuna in the water, water. so you know we you know we look around and dip, find different things um, I like peanut butter and those kinds yeah. of things mm -hmm. and jelly mm -hmm. or preserves so <clears throat> uh, if you uh, you know as far as the fruits and vegetables and stuff we have a great wet market and, and dry market here so we can purchase um, uh, our vegetables and stuff here there's a few vegetables here that I, I there's some, I wish there was a few different vegetables here that that we don't see here like we're used to back in the west but you know overall I mean they have great vegetable selection I'm not a great big vegetable fan because I know my mom can <laughs> watch this so but if but I, I eat, if he, but he eat if I cook the no. I eat what she fixes most mm -hmm. all the time. The the sour soup doesn't do too well with me. There's a few <laughs> things that that don't. But the fish, a, the fish, uh, the fish. Uh, I the like eggplant. Fish. You don't eat eggplant as well. I don't. Yeah, I'm not a big eggplant fan. Mm -hmm. So that's it for the grocery guys. So sometimes we are closer in Subic, so we can get uh, right. the groceries uh, in the Subic. So we're just like one an hour, an yeah, hour away. An hour. And are away from Subic, so Subic, you know, Subic area is a lot of foreigners there from other countries, so they have a lot of stores there that you can buy from other, from American, from mm -hmm. other country, Korea, and something like that. Yeah. So it's very easy. It's very if we miss if Charlie miss all the food in the in the U.S., then we will drive there and buy the food that he wanted to. Eat. Yeah, and one of the things that's really different for a foreigner, like for us from the U.S., a lot. Of, I come from a Midwest uh, mm. part of the United States where we buy in bulk. I mean, we have larger families. We buy in bulk. You know, we buy a case of of green beans or a or you know we buy gallon cans of things. Mm. And so it, it's a little bit different to get used to, but yet you can still save money in the Philippines if you watch where you're at and buy yeah, in bulk and, and and look. And that just requires, it's just something that you weren't used to doing yeah. and still aren't used to doing, you know. <laughs> like the other day, they had chicken for 90 pesos or 99 pesos yeah, uh, per uh, kilo. kilo. Per kilo, whole chicken. Yeah. And that's a really good savings. That was 40, yeah. uh, that was 40 uh, pesos uh, savings on uh, per kilo. So, uh, you know, it. If you have freezer space and things like that, that makes it a lot better where you can buy when mm -hmm. things are on sale, buy a little larger quantities, and a lot of times that helps out a lot. Yes, yeah, true. Especially when it comes to other items like soaps, things like that, hair shampoo, instead of buying the little packets, what do you call them? Sachet. Sachet. <laughs> you know, you buy it in a larger quantity. Uh, you know, and, and that's the same way with the propane or bottle of gas. Mm -hmm. You know, one bottle lasts us, what, about three months? Sometimes two, two sometimes three. three. It depends the cooking. Yeah, yes. like since we've been in quarantine, we do 99.9% .9 of our yeah. cooking at home because there was nothing open. So, so it was about two months when we went through. So so that's 650 almost pesos. Almost two months, yeah. Yeah, so you could, you know, you could break it out. You'd have about 300 pesos per month. Mm, yeah, for a few will. So since we have a car, so uh, we have uh, to buy a gas so our gas is three thousand a month and then that would be sixty dollars so if you live here in the philippines and you you don't want to have a car then you can replace that one with a public trans transportation how much you're gonna spend on public transportation but you know guys it's really worth it if you have a private transportation because it's really 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 worth a lot it takes a place. lot of your restrictions away of being able to movement. Mm -hmm. You can get around, you know. And we basing the three thousand off of prior to the quarantine because during the quarantine, I left the house once a week yeah. to go get, you know, to go to the wet market and on and buy groceries. So uh, we were down to one thousand only. We have about one thousand pesos a, a month. month, you know. But this in that three thousand pesos of sixty dollars U.S. a month, that that afford we kind of made it kind of once a month to have a special little trip to either go to Subic or to mm -mm. Papanga. Uh, attend the Bible study. Yeah, and, and, uh, and our Bible study the service church. attend the church. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and so once a month we tried to take and go and combine a, a grocery run, so to speak, to mm -mm. somewhere. We're out into one of the larger cities, an area we haven't been get to go to very often. So, yeah. so we we figured in a little extra in our fuel, and, and it works out very well for that. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Then another thing is our cell phone. So since we have a internet, so we are not really uh, using much on our cell phone. So we just put six dollars in our cell phone. That would be three hundred pesos. So that's the two of us already. Yeah. What we do is buy one little card and then mm -hmm. share it. Share it. Uh, yeah. Because really, there's not. We don't do much calling because with our internet provider, mm -hmm. you're able to call back to Mama and Papa yeah, as well yeah. on there you have our on phone, our phone. Yeah. And then with the internet, you know internet now you can like i have magic jack i call the u.s yeah. for nothing mm -mm. you know because i have the anywhere in the u.s and mm -hmm. and so it, that that helps out that's some of the things is as uh you know expats coming over you know to stay in touch internet's made a great thing mm -hmm. uh get things like magic jack there's some other ones out there you know at least you have an assigned number you can give it to the banks and the institutions that you need to back home in your country and then when they when you go to, when they go to call it's just they just call a local number because most places my bank is very good because i am in navy federal credit union have been for 33 years and so they will call an international number or they'll accept a click call even internationally mm -hmm. click call which is very expensive but it's just nice to have that ability mm -hmm. to make those contacts back and mm -hmm. forth and so between the and internet. that's also uh, magic jack is very important also when you call like if you have something important matters in like the usais the yep. va in the VA, us or the sss any of those you're not required to have messenger in that one so you yeah. need to have a magic jack so yeah. that's one thing that americans need to provide when they come here if they have connection with the government and the United States, but if you don't have any connection, then you can just go ahead and use the messenger. Well, and it's also really nice, you know, uh, for family members because everybody back home's got cell phones. You know, they can pick up their cell mm -hmm. phone and call, and it doesn't cost anything. You know, mm -hmm. to call the magic jack, and mm -hmm. you know, the time difference makes it kind of rough sometimes. But you know, but that it works really well. Mm -hmm. So we keep our cell phone really down to a minimum. They're very nice to have. Now, when we travel. Uh, we put data on. We'll we'll purchase data and put data on, and then that allows us to have GPS and the mapping and and all that stuff like Google Earth and all those kinds of things for traveling. So we'll put some data on one of them, and that gives us a, the opportunity to use the cell phones that way too. And we can do SMS and yeah. and Messenger and all that stuff while we're traveling. Yeah. So that's it. So the last one that we have is the miscellaneous. So the rest of our expenses that would be miscellaneous. So. The, the inclusion of the miscellaneous are visa and then his visa extension and then going out to eat you know once in a while and buying some stuff like clothes and some stuff and let, little extra that we can use for what else well you know there's times you know we'll see something that'll be on sale that yeah. you know, would be nice to have it's, you know yeah. you know mm -hmm. pick up you know well, like order from Lazada, I ordered a cable from yeah, Lazada like here, mm -hmm. what, two weeks ago or three weeks ago that I needed. Yeah, I didn't have to have, but it was nice to have, you know. So yeah. we always try to figure in an, an extra little bit of an expense for that. And she'll give you what we have for dollar amount. We have $300 for that US. one. U.S. U.S. dollars, yeah. yeah. And that would be 15,000 pesos in the Philippine money. And that's, you know, we want to stop and have a... Uh, smoothie or mm -hmm. or something like that that's all extra above our groceries you know or if we want to get an ice cream cone or yeah. or you know we haven't been able to go to the movie theater for four months you yeah. know now those kind of things but that's what yeah. we figure that kind of extra for or we're at church and and we and oh. after church we want to go out uh, go out with a brother and sister for church before church for breakfast or after for lunch yeah. or take some things for the Bible study, you know, to eat. So we kind of figure those in as a little, you know, on that. On oh, that. and another thing that you can add for miscellaneous, mm -hmm. if you have a child or a mm -hmm. kid that you're going to send it to the, what they call this one, to the private school, because you have school. to pay that one for yeah. their monthly. They yeah. for their monthly. So you can add on that one, but I'm going to be basing everything in here. And then we computed everything and that the total cost was 1116 So that's why I'm telling you earlier, if you have 1500 to 2000 US dollars, then you are good to go here in yeah. the Philippines. You, have, you are good to live in the Philippines. But as what I said earlier also, that would be basing where you live. If you live in the province, in the island, the mountain. But right now we're living in the city. So this is the, the what do you call this one? The, the total cost. Yeah, it's a total cost. Yeah, total what cost we spend. of living in the city, of what we spend. Yeah. But each 
based well, on that's what he said each individual are different it depends how you spend your money yeah 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 and you know and, and it's it's up to the individual couple or individual if you know if you're not uh, it, it really one of the things is as uh, uh, expats there's there's different prices for us when we go to the market I mean, we can yeah. all be honest. You know, I'll go buy, uh, I'll go, I'll go buy a kilo of, of tangerine oranges, small oranges, right? It's 180 pesos for me. She'll go buy it. And she'll get it for 120. That's why. Right? That's why I always say, oh, uh, let me buy that one because they will <laughs> overprice it. But you know, and, and I've lived in foreign countries, really a lot of my life, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the military, and now that I'm out. The last 10 years basically I've lived outside of the US so I've gotten used to that yeah so but it does it's down to the what what each of you want uh, you know basis you know you can you can go uh, to Subi and, or Cebu and have a mm -hmm. very very nice condo it's gonna cost mm -hmm. you around 600 US a month and that includes your electric your water yeah. all that in a condo you know and and how and you got pool gym you know all those kinds of things you know that comes along with it so you know, if you're a person that has to go out and go to, uh, what's the name brand coffee shop? You know, the one. Up Starbucks. To, Starbucks. If you got to go to Starbucks, you're going to pay almost the same price as it in the U.S. for a Starbucks yeah. coffee. Yeah. So, but it's here. It's available. That's one of the nice things about it. So it's going to depend on your lifestyle. If you want to go to the province, to the yeah. country. And we have property that we've gotten, uh, you know, that will. So our lifestyle is going to be changed. Our lifestyle <laughs> will be changed. We won't have rent. But then again, we'll be investing in the property more, you know, yeah. building home, you know, upkeeping the home. So those things don't really kind of go away. They just kind of move under a different category. Mm. But so, you know, I, we just don't want someone to think, you know, you hear a lot. We see a lot on the Internet, you know, mm -mm. You, you know and there's, there's these uh, travel expat channels that come out you know there's popular in the u.s you see tv commercials i remember for a mood to belize there was tv <laughs> commercials mood to belize you can live on 500 us a month and you can but you're not going to live u.s lifestyle i'll guarantee you you won't yeah. live u.s lifestyle i live totally off the grid in belize i had no electrical no running water uh and like i did have them but they weren't from the from a provider i had solar uh captured rainwater you know all those kinds of things and so it, it and it all depends on your the lifestyle that you want to have most of us and i and i, I don't want to categorize everybody but most of us mm -hmm. that come from the west uh we'll just use the west we come for a slower pace the slower lifestyle mm -hmm. and uh, we 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 know that we want to step back we don't like the hustle and bustle we don't have to live in a 4,000 square foot home, yeah. you know, fully air conditioned, all those kinds of things, you know. So, uh, we, you know, we choose to use air conditioning because we can, we have, yeah. can afford to, and it's comfortable for us, especially the last couple months because of summer, yeah. you know. And then the quarantine, boy, you know, we was locked down here, you know, and still are in <laughs> lockdown. So, you know, we're not able to get out and about in the fresh air and move around, do those kind of things yeah. as easily as we used to. So, before. we need the air condition. <laughs> <laughs> so, you I mean, I come from a bit, of, a bit of different lifestyle than she comes from, but you originally came from the islands, so you're living in a different yeah class or lifestyle than you did even in the islands. But I've been I've been away for since I was 16 years old, so yeah. I'm kind of used to the city, you know. But still, yeah. I'm I miss the province life. Yeah, you know that's why we decided to move in a farm. So we want to plant and do some another farming and. Uh, pond uh, yeah yeah so we kind of mess up that one so and I like there because it's really peaceful also <laughs> quiet yeah, yeah, yeah and I think when you look at things you know uh, we have a family mm -hmm. uh, we have two children uh, we have mm -hmm. a teenager and a brand new little baby girl yeah so you have to look at those things you know there's school expenses and along comes with school expense comes lunch mm -hmm. you know you have to pay for lunch you have to pay for transportation to get yeah. to school if it's not close enough to walk mm -hmm. so you know you can you can figure 150 pesos a day uh, just for transportation and lunch you yeah, know for, to go to school uh, so you have to take those things and then you get a newborn baby there's diapers they grow out of everything mm -hmm. so fast you know all those things that come along with so you have to base your income off of your establish what mm -hmm. you have and your needs but if you truly, really want to come here and have a what we would call as a Western comfortable life, uh, or anyway, in, in in our point of view, uh, and many others, you can definitely do it on a two thousand a month. Yeah, I mean, now if you come here and you got to go to the bars, you got to drink, you got to party, 
you, you know, all those kinds of things. <laughs> that would not be enough. <laughs> uh, two thousand as a single guy. You, <laughs> long as you rented a little bitty apartment, yeah, you might be able to do it on two thousand, depending on how much you drank and how much you bought for everybody yeah, else at the if bar. It, if, you know. he, if he will rent in a small room and then yeah. only him, yeah. and then doing those stuff, then I think you know. that would be enough. Yeah. I don't know. It depends how how sober or how. Yeah. So what we're trying to get a point we're trying to get across is not just. You can't just say you can come here and live on fifteen hundred U.S. dollars a yeah. month or eight hundred pounds. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you have to base it off what lifestyle you want. And yeah. I'll tell you right now, for someone who's never really been outside of their uh, country, country or their cus custom of where they're at, and you come to any country, I mean, I you know, I've, I've been blessed and fortunate. I've traveled in the military yeah. uh, and been to many other countries. But even when I moved to Belize, it was still a change. It's a shock, and there is a shock value to it. Uh, some people accept, adapt to it easier, mm -hmm. but yet you, it takes a little time to change that lifestyle. It don't just happen overnight. I mean, some people can just, okay, I don't need this no more. You know, if you have a certain special hair shampoo you got to have that's made, and you can only get it in the United <laughs> States, I mean, that you got all the time, they sell it here, you're going to pay twice as much for it than anything else to three times. So you have to take those things into consideration. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I think people really need to take into consideration is your health. What kind of condition are you in before you yeah, get here? Yeah, get uh, here. I'm fairly healthy in the sense, I mean, I'm, I'm a disabled veteran. I have uh, several things wrong with me. Uh, there's a few people out there who might say that a lot of them is mental, but that's all right, too. <laughs> we love them. <laughs> but that's what good, I'm saying... That's a good thing about the VA. Veterans. That's a good thing about the VA because, because we have a Veterans have Administration to. in Manila. And that's one of the things I think, it, you know, most uh, veterans look at yeah. is what kind of health care can they get outside of their country they're mm -hmm. in. And so when you look at it, uh, you know, Philippines offered now, and when I was in Belize, my closest VA was either Florida <laughs> or going to Puerto Rico, you know, San Juan, yeah, Puerto Rico. Are, how many hours are we in Manila? It's like four, well, I can take four the, hours. Well, I can take the fast cat if I catch it at the right time, yeah. and I can be there in about an hour and a half or two across hours, two yeah. hours, you know, or... Take the if we bus it, then that's one thing. We could drive there in about probably about three, three hours, hours by the time we got downtown to where the where the VA is at, mm -hmm. give or take. But if you leave like earlier here, it's yeah. only one hour to hours. Yeah, yeah. Traffic, you know, you got to take all those things into consideration. Yeah, in but here. if you have to, if you have to constantly be with a doctor, I mean, every month you got to go in and do this or do that or do that. Take a look at your health care situation. Take a look at the mm -hmm. health insurance plan. What's your plan may or may not. There is uh, health insurance plans for expats. You can buy them. Uh, yeah. I had a lot of friends that was in the ministry uh, uh, and uh, missions work. And there is plans out there that you can buy that are very fairly reasonable uh, health insurance plans that work. And you just have to get with those companies and find out if they have the coverage right in the Philippines or Thailand or Vietnam or yeah. Belize or wherever you may decide to go. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's all guys. So if you are, uh, if you want to have more questions, if you want to ask something, just comment down below and we will try our best to answer those yeah. questions. And yes, that's uh, $1,116, uh, $1, that's, that's, that's our, our average. That's yeah. our average expenses here in Bataan, living in Bataan, Philippines. Yeah. So we're in the city, closer in Balanga City. So we are just only five, five minutes away from the city. So yeah. anyway, that's it. So I hope you, thank you for watching and I hope you guys will like and share this uh, video and thumbs then <laughs> or thumbs down I guess please, <laughs> please subscribe to yeah. our channel guys and don't forget to smile and be happy see you in my next video guys thank you so much bye thank you thank bye you bye, -bye.